uh, I know that that you wrote a book uh, defending uh, pornography. I, I haven't I haven't read it uh, read the book yet. Uh, are there any pictures? Yeah, I was just going to say <laughs> the pictures are actually quite amazing because I, if I do say so, I chose them to illustrate that no matter who you are, there will be something, some image that is deeply important and valuable to you that other people will denounce as pornography, mm -hmm. including some uh, pictures of uh, illustrating biblical scenes. So mm -hmm. for those who are coming from a Christian traditionalist uh, anti-pornography perspective, they would be horrified to know, but there actually have been attacks on biblical imagery and and and, and language as being pornographic. And, and certainly from the, the so-called radical feminists who wanted to censor pornography, a lot of their own words and books were attacked as being pornography, right? Because in the, oh, the, the, my fav favorite uh, illustration of that, Lou, there was this organization in New York called Women Against Pornography. And they used to have these sidewalk displays in prominent places, including Grand Central Station, wherever there was a lot of foot traffic, where they would display blown up images of what they considered to be the most horrific, violent, misogynistic, disgusting pornography, right? And they weren't displaying it because they thought people would look at it and commit mm -hmm. crimes or rapes against women, right? They thought it would have the opposite impact, which just shows the lack of logic in, in, in the censorship um, position. But uh, uh, they were actually thrown out of Grand Central Station by commuters who complained. And guess what? They came to the New York Civil Liberties Union asking us to, protect to defend us. their right to display pornography. Wow. Wow. That, that's really interesting. I, I, uh, it, there, was a, there was a debate going on on Twitter, I guess, you know, not too long ago. The, the, these culture war debates pop up every now and then. And you're like, what, what year are we in? But uh, I guess a number of conservatives were talking about, um, I think, I think they said uh, we should, we should take pornographers out and shoot them in public or something like that. It was some, it was some, you know, crazy thing. And I, I responded to one by saying, you know, if you film that, would that be considered a snuff film? And would that be, you know, pr protected? But, you know, obviously people get, um, you know, they have, you know, very strong reactions uh, to, to pornography. And it, it's, and, uh, you know, recently, uh, Larry Flint, uh, I think just the other day passed away. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, yesterday, and I, uh, yesterday, I, I tweeted out saying that uh, Larry Flint and two live crew, which is a, a rap group, did more for free speech than, than the New York Times. And I might be I might be hyperbolic there. But but the two of them definitely did. Uh, um, did uh, great things for, for free speech. And, and not just sexual expression, which is important, but he was a uh, crusader for free speech, for you know the right to burn the flag, the right to engage in political satire. He had a case that went all the way to the Supreme Court that was extremely important about you know the right to satirize public officials and um, the idea that emotional distress is not a justification for censorship. Extremely important. The film that was made about him uh, is really excellent, and I think it's terrible that it was boycotted, and I think it was um, boycotted from getting Academy Awards. Oh, really? Uh, because I, I may be wrong about that. There was a campaign to try to do that, spearheaded by Gloria Steinem and other anti-pornography feminists. Um, it's really too bad because the film was so much about the other, you know, I and I defend the, his right to, you know, create pornography and other people's right to to use it. But his legacy goes far beyond that. He was a crusader for uh, civil rights, you know, for racial justice. And in fact, it was somebody who disagreed with that aspect of his work who uh, who shot him. He spent, mm -hmm. you know, the last part of his life, many decades in, in a wheelchair because of his civil rights activism. Yeah. And then what what are the arguments now for people who are against pornography as far as uh, making it making it illegal? Um, because uh, I know the, the arguments uh, for obscenity often come down to, you know, what your community would would uh, would think of, of pornography. But now with with the Internet, I mean, the whole globe is local. So yeah. I don't know how you would 
you know, use that argument? Well, first of all, these are technical terms oh, okay. and I don't, I don't think it's necessary to get into it. They're, they're terms that apply to different categories of sexually oriented expression. Um, obscenity is the only one that has legal significance. It's a small subset of sexually oriented expression that the Supreme Court has said should not be protected in a very controversial decision. Mm -hmm. So feminists who wanted to outlaw, some feminists who wanted to outlaw a different category of sexual expression. Obscenity is based on offense to traditional community values, right? Okay. In the local community, and uh, Andrea Dworkin and Catherine McKinnon, starting in the late 1970s, spearheaded a crusade that said, "No, we're concerned about sexually oriented expression that demeans or degrades women, and therefore we contend leads to discrimination and violence against women." I'm part of a number of feminist groups who feels exactly the opposite that uh, it is women and um, lesbians. And and uh, advocates of reproductive freedom who depend on robust free speech, who are going to have our speech outlawed and demonized as, porn as pornography, uh, as demeaning to women. And, and, and therefore, we have the biggest stake in opposing those laws. And in fact, um, a feminist style anti-pornography law was passed in Canada. And just as we had predicted, uh, among the first works censored were books written by Andrea Dworkin herself. Because why? In, in crusading against pornography, she describes it. And so her books mm -hmm. were, were confiscated by Canadian customs as pornographic. And um, all the lesbian and uh, bookstores in Canada were essentially shut down because the law enforcers said that's inherently degrading and dehumanizing to women, even if it's consensual. You know, that makes it even more degrading and dehumanizing. So I take the same position on sexual speech as I do on so-called hateful speech, Lou, that it is up to each of us as individuals to decide what we do want to see and what we don't want to see. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the government should have no business censoring it based on content alone. It's only if in a particular context it poses an immediate danger of specific serious harm, such as the intentional incitement that we talked about earlier. Only in those contexts should speech be uh, suppressed.